but these guys, the very best in the business. So if you're going to learn off anybody, you learn from this lot. 100%. They are box office, absolutely for sure. The best in the business, setting standards year after year and winning World Cups one after the other at the moment. They're there for everybody to shoot at in terms of an advert for a game. They're an absolute blockbuster. So Rob Carney winning his 70th cap today. We've had a, a huge amount of rugby this season and up against the likes of Ben Smith, his opposite number, who has just been in incredible form. The referee is Mathieu Reynal and we are underway in the Chicago sunshine. And Ireland taking play inside the All Black 22 to start off with. Aaron Smith is at the base, restored to the number nine jersey after the, uh, the incident in the Christchurch airport. He's missed the last three test matches, but that is a, a decent clearance to get him underway. That's interesting, isn't it, Ali, that, that Ireland against the All Blacks, Lansdowne Road, the Aviva Stadium, the roar would be absolutely phenomenal at this point. Out of town, long way from home, it's obviously going to be quieter in the stadium, just a completely different dynamic. Rory Best then, winning his 98th cap this afternoon. A lovely line-out ball for the Irish to work with, carrying hard into... Those black shirts. Liam Squire makes the tackle. Ireland keep to keep that momentum high, the tempo strong. And there's a first penalty given up by New Zealand. So an encouraging start from Joe Schmidt's men. Yeah, nice clean win at the line out. A little runaround play trying to get a second touch for Johnny Sexton on the ball. Classic straight out of the playbook from Leinster. And then Aaron Smith. Clearly trying to time his run once the ball is presented now out of the rook, just trying to time his run to come in and disrupt. They're a fraction early, but it gives Ireland an opportunity to get into the 22 and on the front foot. And as we always say at the start of these very big matches, how important it is to draw the fire in the early stages to get some sort of foothold in the match early on. If Ireland are to profit this afternoon, they've got to have a good start, a fast start. Devin Toner wins the line-out ball. Good deal taller than anybody else standing in the line out this afternoon. Of course, the, the lock pairing, the white lock, metallic lock pairing, not available to New Zealand at the moment. And there's another penalty with the All Blacks penalised by the French referee for failing to roll away. And there's your first little bit of look that you need. They got the ball wrong at the beginning of it. Devon Toner won the ball comfortably enough, as you would expect him to, against... Tui Pilotta and, and Kano dropped the ball in the middle of the ball, but fortunately for them it went backwards and was deemed to have gone backwards by the referee. A decent carry and then a lazy all-black defender just lying there, testing the referee out, seeing just how long he will let them go. Classic all-black tactic, any team really, you've got to find out what's in the referee's head regarding uh, the speed of ball he's expecting to see, but this is almost exactly where Sexton missed that kick three years ago. That thought, if it is swirling atop his brain right now. A fast start from the Irish. Three minutes gone, three points on the board, and the All Blacks penalised twice in these early skirmishes, and Johnny Sexton making them pay. Good shot from Johnny Sexton, wants to settle the nerves. The All Blacks are, and we'll say this a lot during the game, the best in the business at retaining their own kickoffs. Dan Carter mastered the flat little uh, forward pass, just carrying over the 10 metre line. Interesting to see whether Barrett can do the same. To the fringes of the 22 from Bowden Barrett. His brother Scott, by the way, looking to make his debut off the bench a little later. The first time those two will have played together. Mum has travelled over. And that's a beautiful take from Ben Smith. So composed at the back. Barrett, Crotty, a little bit of space opening up here for Naholo. Naholo ripping through. Dragged down just about, and the ball won't quite fall for Kieran Reid. It's carried over the line, but was it forwards? It's 
speed of handling from the All Blacks there once they've won that ball back from the from the box kick. Ben Smith, pound for Can you give me a reason why I cannot walk this try, please? He must be the best player I in the world. From my view, it's not a, a knock on, it's with the head, but I just want to check, I just want to be sure, please. So, any reason that Mathieu Reynal cannot award the try? TMO today is Rowan Kitt, and uh, that looks like it may come off the green shirt rather than the black one. Yeah, it's just whether Kieran Reid got a finger on the ball. Blistering break from Naholo, though, after fantastic hands from Barrett and Crotty. Just rode that tackle brilliantly from Carney, didn't he? Then the big fend on Zebo, and as ever, the offload. Stander couldn't hold on to it. No, top Kieran Reid's face, which isn't a knock-on. Stander with the arm, and then I have a decision. The Kieran Reed, and then for me there is no knock on because the ball touched the, the face by George so, Moala. So yeah, I will award the try. Our number eight. Rory, there is no knock on because the ball yeah. touched the face. But uh, he tackles our number eight. Our number no matter the effect for us, so I will award the try. Try for New Zealand confirmed. Moala's third in New Zealand colours, and after conceding an early three. They strike with the first try of the game. First piece of possession. Standard Same exit from Ireland. Box kick, great box kick. But as I was saying, Ben Smith gets up, manages to find a little bit of daylight to get on the front foot. And then there is no fear in the All Blacks. They back their ability to handle the ball, catch and zip the ball two passes out. And at some point in every All Black attack, one person runs absolutely dead straight down the pitch. This time it was Naholo. Straight through the gap and away. And Barrett has fired it wide, and uh, we're back to the conversation we were having not that long ago. Bowden Barrett, for all his brilliance from the tee, not always accurate. And uh, this, the break from the holo that made all the difference for New Zealand. Good support lines, as ever, from Reed And Moala, who is celebrating his 26th birthday today. To try in uh, each of his starts for New Zealand. Centres, of course, needed a little bit of shoring up, a little bit of change work, inevitably when Nonu and Smith retired, and they've got plenty of options there. No, no, you can't play. Ball is available. Sabah. Another man He's back. who's breaking records seemingly with every outing, winning his 50th cap today. Incredible strike rate, but again, the handling is slick and fast. And Ireland reassembling their defensive line. Barrett Wait. sends it high. Carney slips past Naholo. Jack McGrath stopped in his tracks. A little dart here from Trimble, that's decent. Best from McGrath again. Runs into Joe Moody. The show from Sexton. He slipped. Carries the fight into that wall of black. Sexton wide. Good pressure from the defensive line. And knock on the tackle. Here's Henshaw to try to tidy things up, but a huge hit. Ben. Hold on, you will have a look. And looks like he may have just knock on, on the tackle. Injured himself in the process. Carried on again by McGrath. Bodies. Pulling away. Hold on, that's fine. The All Blacks just falling foul of the Reynal whistle for the uh, for the second time for that offence. Not rolling away. Yeah, and Ireland playing smartly. There, they're, they're going to trap him in there at any, any given opportunity. Being pointed to by Conor Murray. No. The tackler. Yeah, wait. They'll want to hang yeah. around there for a fraction of a second, but Ireland will see that. They'll want to pin them in and try and buy a penalty. Check. So the referee's going to have to be smart. But I think they're going to have a look at a potential tip tackle here. Yeah, I just want to check the tackle here. Okay, TMO. Check. Just, just one thing. Uh, 
three penalty kick on the rock area. I want space and speed, okay? Yes, okay. So you... give a message to your team, please. Yep. Just on that. Give us time. We've got to be able to get out so they can't hold us in there. So you understand that picture? Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. But give space and speed, okay? Yep, that's right. so, uh, here's the tackle. Oh. And John Moody, yeah. well, the moment the legs are lifted, Paul, players generally know can they're going to be in some form again, of trouble. Please? Moody's in trouble. Yeah. For, for me, it's just a case of whether it's yellow or red. Just a question. Uh, legs above the, the hips, yes or no? So, landing on the back. So, uh, uh, yeah, penalty kick and yellow card against the number one black. Are you happy with that? So, in all probability, New Zealand will be reduced to 14 here. Mathieu Reynal jogging across to Joe Moody. Yeah, can you call the number one, please? Yeah, lift, read yep. on the player, landing on the back, so it's a yellow card and penalty kick here, okay? okay. The number one. Exactly, yeah, maybe, but we, we, have, we, have, clear, yes. we have clear guidelines yeah, about that, yes. okay? Clear guidelines, yellow card for Joe Moody. So New Zealand's reduced by a man, and they're loose head off the field for the next 10 minutes. Uh, that's, fine. Oh, that's my job, okay? Henshaw just straightening on him. And uh, in order to get the power, just too much lift on it. Henshaw landing uh, on his back and shoulder area, so a yellow resultant. Yeah, quite right. We don't want to see uh, dangerous play, but we also don't want to see players uh, red carded and taken out of the game for, for something like that, where initially it looks horrible, but actually nothing too dangerous in it. So right decision from the referee. He's going to spend a fair bit of his time, I think, talking to Kieran Reid and Rory Best unless he tells them to back off because they look like they're going to haggle for every bit of uh, position and possession they can get. So time out for Moody. And in the meantime, Ireland's will look to profit. They have to try to profit now with this numerical advantage. Rory Best shepherding this excellent driving ball, Murray. Looking to use it and deciding actually that keeping it tight is the best option. Liam Squire having to race round and Ireland have made it inside the 22. They've got the advantage and out it comes. And Sexton not quite linking up on the loop from Jared Payne. So back we go for another penalty. Brilliant driving play from Ireland. Silent tree and collapse. Just interesting, isn't it, with a player as good as Jerome Kano is. Second row is completely different. All that, that being in the heart of defending those drives, getting yourself into the right position. He won't be experienced at doing that. He'll be fine in the line out and in the loose, but the drive and the scrum are going to sap his legs and perhaps just take the edge off that all black drive. Yeah. First black start the line. at lock for Jerome Kano. Did fill in there on one other occasion a couple of years back against South Africa, but it is a, a very different job to be done. So, great attacking platform, this one for the Irish. Taken in again by Tona. And now that driving ball within a handful of metres. Rory Best bearing down on the try line. Support arriving. Black shirt swarming. Ireland finding the turf or not? It's going to need a few camera angles. Okay, we will check. I didn't see it. Yeah. Okay. So assistance um, being offered there by Ben Whitehouse. Well, one. Yeah, we, we, we've got a, a potential knock on uh, in the mall, so we don't we, we don't know if you bring the ball before the ball touches the ground. So can you give me a reason why I cannot award this try, please? Okay, so the, uh, exactly. the same question, but. A suggestion of a, of a yes. knock-on during the mall. Which is obviously the first thing to adjudicate on, as there is another conversation with Rory Best. 
But if it, yeah, go to the knock-on, find out if it is. If it isn't, then get to the ground. And it didn't look to me from the, the shots that we see that he got the ball to the ground. But if you're looking at the knock-on, there's two or three New Zealand players hitting them all from the side there, which is a standout penalty. Just which one do you go with first? When the mall is set up... Uh, so to the side here with uh, Jordy Murphy, who joined forces Before with no, maybe. Rory Best. Yeah. Potential knock-on. Rowan, as, as the line-out came down, a potential knock-on when the mall is set Murphy's up. celebrating there, you can see the clenched fist. And from that angle, he looked like he got very close to the ground, unless there was an all-black arm underneath it. Just whether the TMO can get all the way back to the line-out and find out what the touch judge has seen. The question was, is there any reason why I cannot yeah. award the try? I, I, no, uh, we just check the potential knock-on. We need to set up a debate. And the reason why I cannot award this try, but it's a try. There is a well. knock-on, it's a try. You can be part of it. No, that, we will check. I'm not sure how much more we're going to learn from um, from these replays. Rowan, have we got another angle, please? I don't know whether we spy the ball just drop to the ground special? and immediately yes no? be picked up. As, as Tona comes down, if you look at the bottom of the feet, the ball appears for a fraction of a second just there and then pops back up. It's hard, actually, to tell whether it was Jamie Heaslip's boot or not. But certainly, on the balance of the first ball that they had, you judge that to have gone backwards when they dropped it. This, this looks the same to me. the try thank you it's a try for Ireland for all the deliberation Geordie Murphy will claim it and Ireland will move back into the lead just what they needed Ireland a man in the sim bin the gone for the guts in New Zealand gone for the drive two excellent drives get up close to the line and manage in the middle of that right by the corner flag not to get bunted into touch and get Geordie Murphy through the middle of it low to the ground and over fantastic score and in light of Bowden Barrett's fairly straightforward miss be a great bonus if Johnny Sexton could put this over it very very well Sexton and the roar from those in green all around Soldier Field will tell you what you need to know Ireland extending their advantage and making the most of their extra man Jordy Murphy will be a, a particularly happy man it was Rory Best who steered them all the way towards the try line and that even in these opening few minutes Grace has proved an extremely effective tactic he certainly has and one not to go away from but they've got to deny the All Blacks possession of the ball in positions where they can run back at Ireland Sexton for Jared Payne himself of course New Zealand born who's back knows a lot of these players from uh, time spent on the other side of the world Sexton swings it away he's carrying it up Who's back? Still intent on shifting the point of attack, even within and just outside their own 22. Until Sexton lets fly. Barrett. Dangerous business, not finding touch. Away, against black. this lot, Ben Smith. And it's an easy mark for Connor Murray. A misjudged kick from the New Zealand fullback, not too often that we can say that. No, you can see Ireland are nervous about when to give the ball back to the All Blacks and in what position. Difficult to see whether they've managed to almost play their way back into their own 22, so Sexton could have put it off. And I've got a feeling it was just outside the 22, the pass, but that's one way to deny the broken field, is to go On to the, the set piece. Yeah. It's worked well in attack for Ireland. We get an opportunity to see how organised their defence is against... Uh, whatever the All Blacks have got to throw at them. 
60 tries in 10 test matches in this calendar year for New Zealand, mostly, as we were saying a little earlier, through turnover ball and kick returns. That is where they tend to punish the opposition. Kane presenting it there nicely for Smith. And this time it's the Irish who fall foul of the referee on the offside line. That's fine, oh, it's such a painful penalty to give away. Having done the bit, of, the hard bit of disrupting the set piece, attacking the line out, forcing slow ball that, that they were probably going to get back from a kick from the All Blacks. Just a basic error up off the back foot, not even affecting play, an easy out for the referee. And Barrett finds an excellent touch. How easily he seems to have slipped into that number 10 shirt. Yeah. Bit of a battle in the early days between himself and Aaron Cruden. As we uh, see a rather lonely shot of Joe Moody, who's still got a few minutes to run on his yellow cards. And it's a little loose, but very quickly onto it is Stander. Murray whips it away. Ireland moving at speed over the 10 metre line. A little bit high on the tackle. Getting through a lot of work in the loose. Conor Murray. Murray again, just keeping everything ticking. And again, a little bit high. Marginally, but enough to upset the referee. Here, but and then you Liam Squire the has to take his medicine. Come down, please. Good stuff from Ireland. Good pace and intensity. Proceed. There are spaces around the breakdown for Conor Murray to exploit. I would expect him to get Zebo and Carney coming, having a look for those. If they can get pace in the game, when Aaron Smith jumps in to plug a gap around the breakdown, he leaves quite quickly and gives opportunity. Fantastic kick. What about that? that? What about that kick? To within seven or eight metres. Leading the world champions by that slender margin of five points after a quarter of an hour. But they know, they know all too well they've got a play to the 80th and maybe well beyond it, potentially. They have learned from bitter experience. But this, another golden chance. He slip taps it back and it's taken in. Quality possession. Murray. Sexton. The advantage being played. The arm outstretched. Carney finding a little bit of room. Look, Carney. Oh, so close. Within one metre. A rare glimpse of daylight for those in green. And now the try line. And that's right. It's two for the Irish with New Zealand down to 14 men. And it all came from this little break from the fullback through the tackle of Aaron Smith. And it set up the almost ideal situation, the perfect scenario. And it all came from a line out of Shore Island. We're going for the driver, slightly overthrew it, and had to recycle the ball. But a great little setup there. Sexton had Carney as the leader, and he had Zebo out the back, attacked the line, and so. So infrequently that lead runner gets the ball, the defenders took a gamble and, and slid off Carney. Great footwork off his right to step again and then to recycle the ball. Just about enough power from CJ Stander from only uh, half a metre out, but a, a big surge took him over the line. 15 points to five with the conversion to come. And in a moment or two we'll tell you about what happened on November the 24th, 2013 when the Irish built up a healthy lead. Sexton, no, putting history to one side. Drifted on by. 
Well, that's a real shame. That is a real shame. That would have been 14 points in the 10-minute window. Nevertheless, notwithstanding the miss, uh, the miss to get over the line twice in that period, it's exactly what Ireland needed. Apply a little bit of pressure on the scoreboard to New Zealand. 18 minutes gone. Ireland leading by 15 points to five. And Zebo is called. Cool, yeah, no. Taken in the air Come and uh, the referee doesn't like it. Kieran, please. And another chat forthcoming. Kieran Reid and Macho Reynal will know each other really very well by the end of this match, you feel. That's an official warning for the repeated infringement. We cannot continue in this way. I'll let you 10 seconds for speak to your players, OK? Too many infringement. And the wreck area, yep. uh, full play, yep. OK? So, gotcha. So another wait, wait. dressing down. And to speak the to the player, will be here, OK? 6-1 in favour of the Irish New Zealand are Time on. I'm not making friends with Mathieu Reynal at the moment. Tackling, tackling in Maybe the Maybe that's the answer to beat them, just keep them down to 14 men if you can for the entirety of the contest. Basic mistakes, though, from uh, from the All Blacks. A tip tackle taking a man out in the air, it's an absolute gift. Would be yeah. very, very critical of our own teams in Ireland if they were doing that. Uh, the All Blacks are susceptible, and the whole lot going for the ball, but he was never going to get round the back of, um, of Henshaw and get up and contest genuinely, so... A clumsy chase, showing a little bit of inexperience, the right winger. Yeah. Line-out ball secured by the Irish. Sexton working it nicely to Zebo, who's then caught in the midfield. Crotty with the tackle. Use it! Trying to work the short side through Trimble. The All Blacks being denied possession at the moment. And the ball has been dropped now. And New Zealand will look to cause havoc from here with the advantage and Aaron Smith being denied the ball by so Murray there is an advantage for the and the penalty on. therefore awarded. You're not really the ball. Right, right. Really awesome, right. Now with Bowden Barrett as your goal kicker, would you go for goal 30 yards out straight in front with their try scoring power? Well, I think such is the scoreboard at the moment. It's deemed a necessity. Bowden Barrett operating at just 65% from the tee during the Rugby Championship. Just one of those elements of his game which uh, could do with a bit of tightening. Probably probably could use a little bit of consultancy work, Grace. Yeah, it's a tough commute, though, there, isn't it? <laughs> um, he is a magnificent player, absolutely blistering pace, and he's been taught the fundamentals of fly-half play, but his ability to attack the line as, either as a first receiver or a second receiver makes him so dangerous. This is the one area of his game that you would need probably a 15 to 20 percent uplift to um, to put himself at world level but absolutely class ball in hand following on from Dan Carter the, the transitions be seamless now that's more like it from Bowden Barrett New Zealand have three more and the gap is narrowed and lest we forget November 2013 Ireland led New Zealand by 19 points to nil at one stage in that match and then of course there was that crazy last 30 seconds 22 17 down Jack McGrath penalized at the ruck a couple of minutes of possession 24 passes 13 pairs of hands 12 breakdowns Crossy scoring and then Cruden needing to retake the conversion because of the early charge off the line from the Irish defensively so they know they've got to go the distance but they've got the ball on the edge of the All Blacks 22, and they're carrying it hard through Jared Payne. Murphy, one of the try scorers. Sexton. A little blast from Henshaw, creating space for Carney and Zebo. Just for a split second, there seemed to be some space to run into. Jordy Murphy sets the target again. And then the ball is fired into Dane Coles. And as a result, there is yet another Irish penalty. You know what, Ali, you and I were talking before about... I give you the penalty when, kick because when he is Ireland outside, okay? but don't lose do possession of the ball or, or when, when they make the mistake that gives the All Blacks 
uh, possession. We had a classic example for that Bowden Barrett penalty. Connor Murray in the middle of the breakdown. The turnover was affected, and actually what he did was concede the penalty rather than concede the ball. He represented it. He knew exactly what he was doing, but it took away the All Blacks' opportunity to run with the ball, which would normally yield five or possibly seven points, depending on where they dot it down. As it was, they get three, immediately get back on the front foot here. All Blacks are a little bit rattled. The referee's happy to penalise them for those very clever and professional little bits of getting in the way. Conor Murray just belts the ball um, straight into the back of Dane Coles. Referee blows his whistle. That last period of five or six minutes is three all, which is exactly what Ireland need to do. Great bit of work in the air again from Rokani, wasn't it? Snaffling it from uh, right in front of the grasp of Ben Smith. Those two will have some outstanding aerial battles this afternoon. Ten-point margin is restored by Johnny Sexton. At the moment, the Irish just denying the Kiwis any quality ball, any quality possession. To lay on the pass from Henshaw was a nice one. Zebo's footwork gaining an extra couple of metres, and then Murray, quite rightly, doing what every scrum half would have done in that scenario. So the pressure needs to be continuously applied. Murray working the touchline. Taken in by Reed. Smith for Barrett. So dangerous in broken field. And here's another who fits into that category. Julian Savea. Tupelo to driven on by Kano. Henshaw clinging off him. But it is Ireland who win the decision once more. And the Irish just about invented the choke tackle in its, in its modern form. As soon as there was a sniff there, they could hold two Peloto up. They all fought, and the instant that the referee said Maul, no surprise, down it went. There it is, the choke tackle executed to excellent effect. Arguably born in New Zealand, actually, at the Rugby World Cup of 2011 under Les Kiss. And they hijacked Australia. And uh, let's not forget New Zealand up against Italy next Saturday. It's live on BT Sport 1 HD. And then uh, Wednesday in the usual slot, 8 o'clock, rugby tonight. BT Sport 1 HD and 4K UHD, David Campesi is our special guest. Stay by. Use Quality it, possession it, from the first scrum of the game for the Irish. He slipped to Murray, who switches the point of attack. Irish always thinking. The hallmark of these Joe Schmidt sides. Come into battle, fully armed, fully prepped, fully prepared. gone out on the full has it no taken in by Zebo whose chase must have been lightning caught one side of the line landed the other I think caught it infield landed out nothing wrong with that maybe they've spotted a weakness in the Holos game under the under the high ball happy there to put the ball up on him just with one chaser on that short side New Zealand were lined up across the middle of the field get off the defensive line once they've got you to that 15 metre edge they, they press hard in the middle of midfield and really do look to force the turnovers there Ireland would be mad to play into their hands and that is a, a sorry sight for all black eyes Ryan Crotty is heading off the fields and he'll be replaced by Malachi Fekitoa unable to recover from whatever is ailing him and the Irish are not without their troubles as well. Okay, that's fine. So while the, uh, the physios do their work, time for us to tell you about the uh, the other rugby coming your way on BT Sport. Uh, next Friday, Bristol against Sale in the Anglo-Welsh Cup. 
One HD in 4K UHD and the Exeter Chiefs. I think it's Cardiff Blues Sunday from 2.45. On the same two channels, of course. The Anglo-Welsh slotting into place while the, uh, the Aviva Premiership takes a break and while the, uh, the international window is open. Ryan Crotty is devastated. Devastated. One of those All Blacks know that the opportunities they get are few and far between in so much uh, competitive rugby and so many people vying for each shirt. I just saw Geordie Murphy there chasing the ball, not in any contact, just went to change direction, his knee buckled underneath him. Luke, you are me? They look innocuous. Let's hope it's nothing yeah, serious. Something special for you? Crotty already taking his leave. Could it be that Jordan okay. Murphy has to follow? And it, it looks like he's being given the um, the oxygen, which is never a great indicator. Josh van der Fleer is the man covering um, covering the back row on the bench for Ireland. Relative inexperience, and of course we, we mentioned them at the start of the programme, Grace, the absence of Sean O'Brien and Peter Romani, who are only just back from injury, really. It deemed a little early to bring them over on a trip of this significance. Yeah, colossal players, those two. Sean O'Brien as a ball carrier and destructive... Destructive ball carrier, destructive defender, so powerful and strong over the ball. Peter Romani, absolute blindside dog. And two players, they can... They can ill afford to do without against the best in the world, but this is looking like a disaster for Jordy Murphy. A try after just 10 minutes, but now it looks like the end of his day. So uh, plenty to ponder for those unfortunate enough to pick up the injuries. The Irish, in the meantime, after 25 minutes, will be delighted with their scoreline. 18 points to 8. Joe Schmidt's plans being executed nicely. The All Blacks giving up a host of penalties. They've been very ill-disciplined. And interesting to see Kieran Reid immediately pulling them in to that circle, Grace. Just trying to reset the button, you feel, a little bit. I and mean, they, they have this priceless ability, or have, have shown a priceless ability in the last 18 months or so, to just go through the gears when necessary, particularly in the last 20, of course. But you feel that's exactly what Kieran Reid was asking for in that huddle? A hundred percent. And what they will have, they will have a psychological map of what to do in any given situation. And if it's ill-disciplined, and if it's players giving away cheap penalties, they will have planned for that. Kieran Reid will have some sort of protocol to go to to speak to his players. Nobody wants to see these long breaks in the game, but interested to see they get the ball in as soon as they can after that little bit of refocusing from, from Reed, There is no doubt they've been loose in, the, in this opening period. They've pushed the referee to the limit in terms of what he's prepared to accept, trying to win the ball or trying to slow the ball down, and he's penalised them quite happily, and Ireland have taken advantage. But another thing that Robbie Dean said to me the other day was the All Blacks have mastered the mental side of the game. That ability to refocus or that ability to deal with whatever situation you're placed in, they're better than everybody else at doing the right thing at the right time. Um, and they're going to have to do that now, which is brilliant to see. Well, we always like to see the best the best in the world at any sport tested, don't we? And with a scoreline like this after 25 minutes, we will see that. We will see the champion quality being displayed. But at the very least, Ireland have, have made New Zealand uncomfortable. They don't have to chase too many games. And they haven't, made, uh, they haven't made the All Blacks uncomfortable because it's belting down with rain or they've just gone hell for leather and, and, and played with just raw emotion and thrown themselves into everything. They've been precise, they've been accurate, uh, they've known when to stick, they've known when to twist, they've shown good power in the mall and the drive at the right time. Ball, scored then. two good Black tries. Ball. Ireland are getting the vast majority of the things they do right. And we said that at the top of the programme. If they're going to win, that's what they've got to do. So all our thoughts yeah, with Geordie out, Murphy as he out, looks for a fast recovery. But his day is done in Chicago and Josh van der Fleer will be on in the back row in his place. Just the third cap for the uh, the Leinsterman. Started against the English and the Italians in the Six Nations. 
very useful man to have uh, roaming around in that back three. Because it's always sad to see players disappearing off beyond the touchline before their time. So, one or two readjustments for each side. And a, a lengthy delay, which can play havoc with, uh, with the minds of, of players as well, Paul. We, we know that the, the New Zealanders have, tr have tried to actively get their act together with their captain rallying them around and giving them a bit of a, a talking to. But Ireland, having had the wind in their sails, might just find it takes a, a little bit of time to get that going again. Yes, but so far they've disrupted certainly the first two all-black lineouts. It's an area where they will attack, obviously, with that inexperienced second-row partnership of Kano and Tupelotu. The sheer height of Devon Toner. This is a good opportunity for them to get straight back into the game. Dane Coles. Can't hear the call. The Irish are not happy with the delaying tactics. More disruption. And it is with Ireland, is it? No, it is. Not for very long. Aaron Smith whips it away. Good line speed from the Irish. Really strong defensive work. Andy Farrell, of course, in charge of the Irish defence now. One of his big things to get up in the faces of the onrushing attackers as quickly as possible. on halfway, Josh van der Kleer in the red scrum cap, newly onto the field. Barrett trying to work some space for Moala. And here is Savea. He's done well to stay in field. Barrett again. To a Pelotu. That looked flat at best, forward at worst from Savea. Again, it is to Pelotu on the charge. Smith, Kano out the back, that was nicely worked, but Barrett well marshalled by Connor Murray. Ben Smith again, Naholo somehow kept alive, and Squire keeps it in field. Aaron Smith. Swallowed up by Henshaw. Feverish defensive work here from those in green. Barrett driven on once more by Kano. Aaron Smith inside the 22 and Zebo gets it away. Under pressure, but interesting to see the tactics from the All Blacks. Not often inside the 22, that deep in the 22, that Smith would choose the boot. We've had a look, you're defending well, we're now going to give you the ball and let you give it back to us with a 30-metre line-out away from your own line. That's all it's designed for. If it rolls out and um, Ireland have to play the line-out, no problem, you're going to give us the ball anyway. Get to that point where we want the ball back to either counter-attack or play from a set-piece. And they have it now, through Smith, trying to weave a path through those green shirts. Trying to press the accelerator button with around about 11 minutes left of this first half. New Zealand who have struggled for a firm footing in this match. Barrett, the ball dislodged, Ireland have it. Turnover possession and Connor Murray. Fires it away to safety. Well, they've been... Like, men possessed defensively Ireland haven't they so far they have just swamped everything that those in black are sending at them and they'll know that in their planning they're going to have to defend for extended periods of time you every single sinew in your body is going to be tested and that is Irish ball as well through Rory Best dropping on it on halfway he slipped the dummy Can 
he sets it up. He slip again. Caught in possession by Liam Squire. Sexton from Van der Fleer. Runs hard at Owen Franks. Zebo. And it's knocked on by Naholo. So they're harrying, they're hassling, and importantly, they're doing much more than that by keeping hold of the ball for long, extended periods. They're looking very good, Ireland, based around All Blacks' inability to win their own line-out. It might not be too long before uh, Scott Barrett, Bowden's brother, gets his first cap from the bench because New Zealand, for my money, haven't won one line-out clean, which has played into the Irish hands. Good play again from them there, happy to go into midfield and recycle the ball using Zebo's left foot, yeah, sorry. That's my they get the mistake, sorry they get the possession back, it's good play from them. It's interesting, no, isn't it, just, just play for me, huh? I'm seeing the that. Irish players line up I, I cannot, uh, I cannot, opposite uh, the hacker no, in the shape you, of the number eight. It's absolutely clear that sorry. Anthony Foley, their fallen brothers on their mind, now. talk about, they sing about standing shoulder to shoulder, they're standing on his shoulders today, that gives them enormous emotional fuel. Okay. Um, and playing for him, fantastic tribute from them. But they're doing it with accuracy, pace, skill. Here is the mark. And with any Joe Schmidt coach team, they're doing it with some smarts as well. well we saw, didn't we, the uh, incredible effect it had on Munster in the Champions Cup game against Glasgow at Tottenham Park just uh, a short time ago. It is really fueling these players at the moment. No pre-engage, okay? Let the space. Yeah, let the space, please. And a huge number of scrums so far this evening. Yeah, left and Some left. That's fine. Experienced campaigners locking horns. Rory Best almost up to the 100 cap mark. May hit that mark in Dublin in a couple of weeks' time against the, uh, the same opponents, of course, Irish, Watch. with two bites at the New Zealand cherry in the next couple of weeks. Solidity at scrum time from Joe Schmidt's men. Sexton trying to carve out an opening through the midfield, and Jared Payne. Referee's happy with that pass, which again had the suspicion of a forward pass about it. Rory Best approaching the 10 meter line. Just asking questions of the blacks all the time, Ireland. Was back. Sexton there. sends it high. And Barrett's completely overrun it, and it's fallen for Connor Murray. Rare confusion in the New Zealand ranks. Zebo. Sexton. This is Ty Furlong. Right, Only his night fighting for his country. Sexton a little slow to get to his feet. Oh, Panamari has spotted the hole and he's gone. He's long gone. Panamari with the third Irish try. The best of the lot. A lovely little step. The half show. And that is a glorious moment for the Irish. All set up by confusion in the All Black ranks from the Sexton kick and Connor Murray spotting that gap, a poacher score. I don't want to say I told you so, Al, but they look frail at a defender when Aaron Smith gets in there. He looked keen to get away from that space and go and defend the first receiver or the fly half. Connor Murray's seen it, red flagged it earlier on in the game. He's picked his moment, 15 metres out from the line. Aaron Smith jumps into first defender. Nine against nine, show and go from Murray, sensational score. Replacement? Well, I don't need this man fit. No? Johnny Sexton has become absolutely pivotal to the success of this outfit. But Aaron Smith caught napping, and that is one in the eye from Connor Murray, who was struggling this week with uh, a bit of a, a hip problem. 
a few question marks as to how he would go. I think we know how he's going. That is now, believe it or not, Conor Murray's third try in five test matches against New Zealand. Not too many have a hit rate like that against the All Blacks. He's absolutely pivotal, Come isn't on. he, to Ireland? Brilliant kicker of the ball, great tactician. Superb leader and competitor. Picked his moment perfectly there after the... He was the man who recovered it after the bomb from Sexton. But Bowden Barrett got nowhere near. It was Murray who got on the ball. But the conversion to come, 34 minutes in, it's like a dream for Ireland. Try number three. So just one from New Zealand. A relatively straightforward effort, this one for Johnny Sexton. Easy pickings. 25 points to eight. Ireland lead New Zealand. New Zealand, the world champions, the best side in the world. 18 consecutive wins on the bounce. They're on the ropes. Scoreboard pressure. That's one of the ways to get to a team and test their mettle. They've been here before the All Blacks, three years ago, most notably against Ireland. But they're in one hell of a fight here. So the exit strategy working nicely as well. Five minutes to go in this opening half, which of course has taken an awful lot longer than the regulation 35 minutes owing to the injuries. I keep looking at the clock and thinking it must be nearly half time, but obviously with that break you get a distorted perception of just how long we've been going. No thought there about keeping the ball on the pitch and landing it on top of uh, Naholo on the wing. Ireland happy to try and attack the line-out. Line-out ball this time secured by Kieran Reid. And Barrett is away. So too, George Moala, who struck in the fifth minute of the game. Savea bouncing off the tacklers, very close to the touchline. Incredible strength, but the Irish will not be denied. Not today, seemingly. Black on the line. In. Well, Rob Carney's seen an awful lot of action in his time, but yeah, we're inside. really having to man the barricades at the moment. Julian Salveo with even the tiniest sniff of the try line is lethal. More. But this ball has been won by Donica Ryan, another warrior of many, many seasons. He missed a couple of them, he's fought his way back into the international ranks. And now the Irish have the crowd behind them, and Rory Best, their skipper, on the ball. Murray. Taken well by Savé. Stander though, competing hard and unable to hang on to it, but he has managed to win the ball. And Conor Murray is working that right-hand touchline, and Smith has a chase on here. Ben Smith zipping past Van der Fleer. But there are great numbers there, and it was the Irish tight head, Tyg Furlong, who made that very important tackle. Use it! To make sure the pressure is applied good and proper, and Barrett fires it away, but the All Blacks are rattled. Brilliant rugby from Ireland, absolutely brilliant. Perfect kick from Murray. Once they got Surveyor to the ground, CJ Stander managed to find a little gap in the breakdown, get his hands on the ball. Classic Munster play from Murray. If you win the box kick, knock it in the hole where the winger came from, puts the ball over the top. You just think somebody must tackle Ben Smith or he'll be away. And it was the tight head prop, magnificent. Gathered at the second attempt by Stander. For an agonising moment, it might have been lost, but it is far from that. Ireland pushing for a fourth try of this opening half against the All Blacks. Conor Murray to Henshaw. Payne. the ball and he's done the job but just a moment or two ago CJ Stander did for the Irish Thank you. 
She put it on the efficient. First three on got his to feet. be careful there, Not Island. The Running hard, solo mission. Get yourself fractionally isolated, and they're all over the ball. I thought for one second Sexton might have been in the pocket. As soon as you get near their 22, try and nick another three with a drop goal. Take any points where you can. So just a, a minute left. And how often have we seen the All Black score around this sort of time, just before the break, just to give themselves a little bit of heart and hope? Dane Coles has found his man in a line-out that's been malfunctioning in this opening half. This is Naholo driving up towards the 10-metre line. New Zealand, for the most part, feeding off scraps. Smith. Barrett. More. And that's the choke tackle once more. Ireland descending in numbers, flopping on the ball and winning the decision. They have to concede so much territory from that initial line-out play because New, New Zealand have runners and ball handlers right across the field. Ireland goes soft in defence and eventually invite Naholo into them and then press hard in the middle of midfield. Clearly a plan, if you go too hard in the middle of midfield, they'll pick a hole and they'll make a break. But as soon as any of those front five boys get in and around the tackle, if they can stand you up for a second, two more men are in straight away. They're the best in the business at that. Good. So one final play before the break. How key for Joe Schmidt's men to hold out here, to head to the locker room. 25 points to 8 up against this side that have been carrying all before them in recent times. They won the rugby championship at a canter. 30 points out of a possible 30. Just destroyed the opposition. Irish have come here level-headed, intensely focused, but organised, thinking clearly and taking their chances. Crutch! Bye! Set! And the set piece has been rock solid. It's been rock solid for the entirety of this half as Johnny Sexton will take them to the break. Ireland playing with a ferocity and an intensity of which Anthony Foley would be proud. They lead the All Blacks by 25 points to eight at the break. Welcome back. And Chicago at the moment being ruled by the Irish. 25 points to eight, they lead New Zealand. And this moment, the most special of the lot. Connor Murray, whose fitness was in question all week, darting through the hole to score their third try of the match. Paul Grayson, it was a, a special time. It, it's been a special half of rugby from Joe Schmidt's men. It's been an incredible half of rugby from Ireland. That just typified it. Seize every opportunity. Eye to eye with his opposite number, Connor Murray. Stole a march, brilliant. So lots more to come across BT Sports in the next couple of days. Premier League today, uh, ironically happening tomorrow, of course, 10.45 a.m. on BT Sport 1 HD and 4K UHD Premier League action as well. Arsenal Tottenham, the uh, the North London derby tomorrow, 11.15. And then in the Emirates FA Cup, Southport against Fleetwood Town, Monday evening viewing from 7 o'clock, BT Sport 1 HD and 4K UHD. So the story of the, uh, the opening 40 minutes, the hacker, starting it all off of course the All Blacks going through their routine but Ireland standing in that number eight formation in memory of Anthony Foley and then letting Maisaki Naholo through the hole a little bit of confusion with uh, the ball coming off the uh, head of Kieran Reid and the follow-up from George Moala was a, a good one, but Naholo, we haven't seen him too much in that kind of space, Paul Grayson, but when he's there, he is exceptionally dangerous. Oh, a ferocious runner, multi-skilled like the rest of the players. They got a little bit of luck there. It was good cover from 
uh, Ireland, but the bounce of the ball went the All Blacks way, and right at that point you just thought it was too easy for them to score, and you almost cross your fingers that that wouldn't repeat itself, but post that, it was just about all Ireland. Three minutes later, there was a yellow card for this tackle from Joe Moody on Robbie Henshaw, lifting the legs, landing on his back, and sent to the bin for ten minutes. Uh, not too much debate about the decision. Sensible refereeing, quick review, dealt with in the right way, certainly wasn't a red card, but Ireland made the most of it. In that ten-minute period, they struck twice. Geordie Murphy was the first of those as... Ireland got their driving mall going, Rory Best conducting operations and then Murphy just coming in for those last couple of metres to get the all-important surge over the line. And he knew, he knew right from the moment that he hit the deck, but it took the rest of us a little while to work it out. You'll see the celebratory fist pump here from the open side as he hits the ground. And there, the, the pump of the fist confirmed by... Referee Mathieu Reynal, Geordie Murphy, who, uh, who sadly had to go off a little later on, but this was the other try while New Zealand were down to 14 men. Lovely break from Rob Carney, setting up field position, and then it was left to CJ Stander to convert it from very close range. Needed just a little reset, and then through the tackles of, uh, of Kano and George Moala. So a try for Stander. That was Ireland's second after 17 minutes. And then this moment of magic from the Irish scrum half. Big hole, big hole, straight through the middle of the ruck. Aaron Smith caught napping. Murray through. Classic scrum half stuff from uh, a man who is so important to Ireland's cause. And so they hold this fabulous lead, 25 points to eight. Can they see it through? Can they make history? When we come back after the break, we'll have the second half view. Dunkargo, which has had its own share of mayhem in the last week with the Cubs' victory, their first World Series win in 108 years. What a place it would be if the Irish could get the job done here. And they are in possession of the ball, as they have been for... Much of the afternoon, the kick partially charged down. They will get the line out just outside the 22, even if they haven't gained too much in the way of metres. There's just that little bit of rubber the green that you want. Could have gone anywhere off the partially charged kick. As it is, it goes out for an Irish line out. The line out's been rock solid on their own ball first half. Clean win here. Maybe go for the heart of the All Blacks again with the drive, and they can get out of their own half. And that ball secured. No, use it, use it, use it. Murray assessing, being urged to make something of the possession now, and Rory Best breaks away. Good line speed. Dane Coles and Patrick Tuapalotti up very quickly. No doubt the uh, the Brains Trust of New Zealand have been working overtime in the break. Steve Hansen, Ian Foster, Wayne Smith, they will have all uh, got their heads together. And issued some fairly simple instructions, you'd have thought. First of all, they need the ball. And they have it now in a, a threatening position. Only choosing not to contest. Liam Squire winning possession. And Sarvea on the ball. They'll be keen to give him as many touches as possible in this second period. Driven on now by Moala. Tackle on Lee. Good, strong carrying from Joe Moody. Lovely rock ball to work with. And Owen Franks is half through the hole. Whipped away again, Salvea freeing up Coles on the outside. No shortage of pace from the New Zealand hooker. But that's been spilt. Real disappointment for Tua Pelotu. Ireland can regroup. Dante Jover. And the ball is fired away very effectively by Andrew Trimble. Brilliant kick from Andrew Trimble. That line-out performance in defence in the first half has ripped in the all-black ball has forced the all-blacks to go to the front of the line which means Ireland can get much higher up the pitch from the set piece they can almost hit Surveyor on the gain line which makes reorganisation easier means they can make more effective tackles and thwart the all-black attack timely turnover for them though more 
functioning just a, a little more effectively in this early period of the second half. One stop. Sam Kane has his hands on it. They're not going anywhere, Use though. It. Stay back. And that's forward from Trimble. It's fallen for Aaron Smith. Trouble here for Ireland. All Blacks queuing up on the outside. Naholo cuts back infield. Ireland regrouping defensively. Barrett. Squire. Good tackle made by McGrath. Smith surrounded by green shirts. Look at the way they are swarming defensively. Look at the way they are handling these lethal all black runners. Quick handling again. Franks carries it up. Van der Fleer in with the first tackle. He's in the rack. Smith, Barrett, that's loose. Picked up by Squire. And an all enveloping tackle from Robbie Henshaw. Stay back. To a pull or two. Not too often that happens. The slick organisation deserting New Zealand and Ireland fighting for the ball, winning the ball on the ground. And again, all their defensive efforts paying dividends. Andy Farrell will have been drilling them all week. Get up in their face, don't give them any space. Great stuff from Ireland again in defence. So those little extra passes the All Blacks so often put in, which really stress defences because it creates a one-on-one -on -one tackle. They've got enormous power. But on retreat there, ball on the floor twice in that passage of play. Great stuff from Ireland and Jared Payne more than happy to whack the All Black on the bottom and point to the referee and tell him he was off his feet, which he was. Penalty count is not like fully reading. That is of a black persuasion. Nine. And four. Johnny Sexton just loves these kind Number of four, contests. Number four, substitution. Just thrives in these Number four. sort of battles. Time after time we've Wait. seen it, haven't we? Time is As off. we see a replacement being made by New Zealand. Is that Aaron Smith going off? No, I think... Um, one of the second rows going off, perhaps Jerome Kano. Come on. I'll clarify that for you in a, a moment or two. But again, it has fallen uh, New Zealand's way. So we have Scott Barrett onto the field, number 19. In place of Tua Pelotu, Barrett making his debut, brother of Bowden. The first time in 55 years that two sets of siblings have, uh, have lined up for the All Blacks. Ian and John Clark, Colin and Stan Meads, the other pairs of brothers. It's a historic moment, proud moment for the Barrett family. And with any luck from a New Zealand perspective, that will really shore up their line out for starters Stay back the ball, least back the ball nine back the ball able to provide a little bit of impact from the bench and uh, Aaron Smith is off and Paranara is on in his place at scrum half taken off after 45 minutes sort of swift substitutions that Eddie Jones would be proud of all backs in possession but again being smothered by this defensive line but will not yield. Carney. A little high from Joe Moody. And then the advantage is being played. Sexton looking to make the most of it. Here goes Trimble. Come off. Back we come. Oh, yes. Just one. I just want to check because I've got a collision with a player. And I don't see clearly what's happened. I think it's an eye tackle. I think the referee got himself stuck in the middle of that collision, so he just took his eyes off it for a moment. Certainly looked high. Yeah, please. Well, so tackle, we'll, eye tackle. We'll wait for the review. And it is, um, it is once again Joe Moody, the New Zealand yeah, loose head, who is in question here. Yeah. That's pretty marginal, isn't it? 
think he hits him about about shoulder height, just leaning in. It rides up onto his neck, which I stops the momentum on. of his upper body. Nothing more than a penalty, though. What what he hit in first the chest, hit the shoulder in first, and then slip to the neck. Is that right? Okay. So it will be penalty kick only. Okay. Come down just. Okay. Penalty kick only. Hit on the chest, slip on the neck, but be careful. Yeah, be careful and be careful, Joe Moody, having had one yellow card already this afternoon. So a penalty only. But Ireland looking to drive home their advantage and pump it inside the 22. Deep inside it. Sensational kick from Sexton. I would have been going for goal myself. The option was there. But they are riding a wave of pressure In. and momentum and no doubt emotion too. So many of these fans packed into Soldier Field wearing green today. Best finds his man in stander. And this a position from which they profited in the opening half. This driving work of the Irish pack so effective in the first 40. And Rory Best, the skipper, is bearing down on the try line. The advantage is with Ireland. But they want more. They will get more. And Zebo will have more. Ireland with their fourth try of the match are putting the All Blacks, the world champion All Blacks, to the sword. Absolute, total and utter conviction from Ireland in what they were going to do. Ferocity in the drive, as soon as the ball was secured, slapping each other, imploring each other to drive on. The All Blacks had got no answer until they dragged it down a yard short. Quick ball and a snipe to the left-hand side. Brilliant from Ireland. And that is the first time in three years that New Zealand conceded 30 points. But you know what, that's one of those decisions. For me, three points all day from 45 metres out in front of the post against the All Blacks. But Ireland today, absolute, total and utter conviction. Johnny Sexton has put it within seven metres of the line from the middle of the pitch, 45 metres out. That is so difficult to do under that amount of pressure. Incredible stuff. Every point precious though still. Still more than half an hour left to play. Still a game to be won. Not to be this time. But 30 points to eight. Well, that's a healthy cushion by anybody's margins. 49 minutes on the clock, and Simon Zebo, who of course scored that very emotional try for Munster against Glasgow just a couple of weeks ago, scoring in the green of Ireland. And no doubt he, amongst so many others out there, driven on by so much emotion, fueled by the loss of their friend, their mentor, their coach, Anthony Foley. trying to provide New Zealand with some respite but the Irish mean business today Sexton well, that's one of the few errors we've seen from Johnny Sexton that's a shame 22 points more than three converted tries seems almost unbelievable what Ireland don't want to do now is get into a position where they go away from what's been working for them. Pass the ball into the midfield there, Johnny Sexton's gone to wallop it. They've had a little run back first half, I think, played two or three phases, then kick the ball. Don't go onto the back foot against the All Blacks. Perinara feeding the holo, and onwards to the skipper, Kieran Reid, yet to lose as an All Black captain. No hands! Read again from Liam Squire. Held up well by ball, Devin Toner, looking ball. for the choke tackle, not working on this occasion. Barrett. The Irish alive to his threat. Quick ball, though, for New Zealand.
Barrett, Coles, the offload, oh what a brilliant gather, absolutely fabulous gathering from TJ Perinara and New Zealand have one back, do not discount them, not for one minute, they have proved time and again how they can weather a storm, how they can strike fast and hard and TJ Perinara has begun the comeback. Great play from them, all the pin from that Johnny Sexton mistake, the ball out on the full. And Ireland defended fantastically so far. But you don't want to fall into the trap of thinking every tackle is going to be a turnover. Every time there's too many involved, it's going to be a choke tackle. That's not how they've played in the first half. They've defended brilliantly because they've picked the right moment to go in for the kill and try and create the turnover. You need to be patient, you need to keep men on your feet. The All Blacks are just looking for that one little bit of light. Dane Coles on that occasion, and the breaks as he made, and then Perinara with the fantastic skill, supported on the inside. Well, he's in red-hot form, five tries in the last four. On here, please. Given his chance, of course, owing to the, uh, the indiscretions of Aaron Smith in, uh, in recent times. But onto the bench today off it to make a very significant impact 15 points the difference and still so much of this match to play it feels like they've been talking about it and they've been playing for a very long time but this is far from over if there is one team in the world who can recover this deficit they're wearing black out there in soldier field this afternoon malachi fakatoa on in place of crotty and finding a touchline Only normal for the nines to have a little word with each other, get to know each other a little better. No, a little wait. bit of to and fro. I'm sure Conor Good Murray space, will be telling please. him that he's seen off one. I can see you off as well, mate. Just to reiterate the point, not least of the, uh, the Kiwis' capacity to recover from this, the Irish have been level or ahead at half-time in eight of their 28 meetings against the All Blacks. And you need no reminding by now that they've never actually got across the line. Perinara whips it away, Barrett under a lot of pressure and still the Irish pour forwards defensively. Brilliantly taken by Carney, who is the master of the skies. Surely down to all that Gaelic football as a kid. So strong aerially and setting up the Irish once more. Sexton finding Trimble, excellent tackle made in the midfield by Kieran Reid. Tona, taken down by Moody. Stand up. Away, Gillian. Grafting. And Van der Fleer just trying to be a little bit canny by holding in Kieran Reid there. They've been a lot cleaner second half, the All Blacks around the rook. Clearly listen to the referee. Naholo. Smith, game breakers everywhere. Smith, prize amongst them. Barrett, another who will love the broken field. Kane keeps it alive. Coles, flat pass for Savea. And the tackle, an excellent one from Trimble. With Henshaw covering, bodies on the line, green shirts everywhere. How many times have we seen Julian Savea get half away down the left hand side off a pass like that? Bouts the first man and goes past the fullback. Two Irish players in attendance, no thought for personal safety. Trimble goes low. Substitution. Henshaw was just going to hurl himself in there. Great stuff from Ireland. We've got another 25 minutes Good. of it to go, lads. Come on. Aaron Cruden. He's uh, warming up. And in fact, is, uh, has come onto the field, I believe. Perinara waiting. And the All Blacks making some serious inroads here. Away it goes from Cruden, from Fakatoa. And Barrett using that big handoff, gets the ball away. And into the corner goes Smith. The All Blacks think they have it. Ben Smith seems pretty convinced. And my goodness me.
just slipping through the gears. Irish hearts fluttering everywhere. Suddenly a 22-point lead doesn't look that big, does it, against the All Blacks when they play like this? It's not hugely structured. What they are doing is being able to get the ball through numerous pairs of hands. And then when they're in the middle of the hottest part of the fire there, just find the gap, a little bit of air to get the ball out of the back. Brilliant finish from Ben Smith. So the, uh, the TMO needs to have another look, clearly, though, and kick. I don't, I don't see the like picture on the, big, on the big screen, huh? Hold on. Well, 18 wins on the bounce gives you a bit of resilience, doesn't it? And allows you to try to finish these sort of chances. And it looks like he's probably just grounded it before the knee hits the whitewash. Gee whiz, that's tight, isn't it? He's even managed to get the ball. He even managed to get the ball end on to give it extra length to get it down in time. With, with no other camera angle. Yeah, you need one right by the flag. Yeah, underneath him, from the other side, really. But without that reverse angle, he's got to give the try. Yeah, yeah what is the decision, Roland? OK, thank you very much. Try for Ben Smith. The gap is narrowing. The All Blacks are on the march. And Boyden Barrett is lining up the conversion. 22 points is now 10. And it might be just eight. And Barrett trying to steal an extra meter or so. Cheeky. Wise from his point of view. He doesn't miss by a little bit. Just trying to squeeze in off the touchline. Bareface cheek that when you've just had a massive big screen review of the bloke dotting the ball down inches from the uh, from the corner flag, but can't blame him for trying at 65%. Take every little extra bit you can. We mentioned it before, how precious every point is. Never more so than today in Chicago. Chicago, where all kinds of strange things are happening. It's low, it's fizzing, it's over. The ugliest of conversions from Bowden Barrett, but from an all-black perspective, it is all beauty. 30 points to 22, still 24 minutes remaining. It doesn't matter how they go over Paul Grayson, you'll know that all too well. 100%, they all count. Two points for the All Blacks. Ireland have got to get back on the horse and get the ball back in possession. They controlled the ball in the first half, starved the All Blacks of possession. You can't afford to go attack the defence against these guys. They are too good. Ireland need the ball back. Ah, number two. Obstruction, number two. Ah. And it's, uh, it's Dane Cole's number by two things. He's been the line. singled out for obstructing... Obstruct the player in front of the receiver. The unrushing Irishman. So, uh, a penalty that will be gratefully received what we do? by those in green. What we do? Perfect. Okay. Just under so much pressure instantly. Time off. It's incredible, isn't it? The, the momentum shift. The All Blacks get on attack. They look like they score every single time they touch the ball. All you need is a break in that cycle. Hopefully, Ireland have got it here. There was nothing in the challenge that was illegal. The block created that. Stop Rob Carney getting up well, for the we, ball. I'm sorry, but we, we, we cannot lose time, OK? Come on. So, just to mark your card on the history books, New Zealand's biggest ever half-time comeback is from 15 the points. And, obstruct the player. and that was, of course, against the Irish in Dublin November three years ago, back from 22 points to seven down to win 24-22. Interesting to see Conor Murray lining up this one. Maybe that's why they went to the corner before, because Sexton's struggling after that bang on his leg. Big moment for Conor Murray, a guy who's got apparently a hit, little bit of a hip flexor issue. Suddenly you're thrown the tee, and that All Blacks wave is coming towards you. You're going to break the cycle of scoring here with a little three. Should be routine. Three. Precious, invaluable points, priceless points for Ireland right now. 
as a real test for you right there. Connor Murray so influential in the game so far, not a regular goal kicker, but pressed into action and steps up. Tiny little bit of breathing space. Five black. Time off. Good? Okay. Time on. What a match we have. What a match. Well, this will be doing wonders for the uh, American watching public, those who are looking to get into the sport of rugby, those who are fascinated by the All Blacks, those who are fascinated by this stunning sport. CJ Stander crashes over the 10-metre line. He has worked tirelessly today. So too Rory Best, who's led from the front. A try against the All Blacks in 2013 and looking to drive them upfield. What an incredible gather from Zebo. That is quite stunning. On the run at full tilt and taking a good three or four feet off the ground. Absolutely staggering. And they turn the ball over and it's away through Adi Savea. Onto the field now. The All Blacks making good ground. Driven onwards by Scott Barrett this time. And then dropped advantage. in the midfield. Johnny Sexton is off the field. And has been replaced by Joey Carberry making his debut. What a cauldron to come into. Carney trying to maintain control here. Wrapped up in the tackle by Perinara. And playing the advantage from the knock-on. Ireland in possession. A word though, Paul, for Joey Carberry. Turned 21 on Tuesday. He's into a maelstrom with 20 minutes to go. The game on the line against the Blacks. They've never beaten. Perfect time to do it. 21, no fear, get in there. So don't even think about it. Just play your game. What a catch. What a catch from Zebo on the left-hand side. He took, it looked like he was joking when he took off. He was that far away. Amazing catch, landed on his back. TJ Paranara got away with absolute murder to create the turnover. Both elbows on the floor when he pilfered the ball. The referee was in a poor position and didn't see it. No surprise Zebo's hurt his back. He came down for about 10 feet. Son Gavin. Just incredible athleticism. He's like Zebedee, isn't he, Simon Zebo? Incredibly springy. Brilliant footballer. Some real maestros in the art of the aerial skills in both teams. That Gaelic football influence, you see it come out. The Gaelic games in, in the Irish players all the time. They are um, as good as anybody when the ball's up in the sky. Kean Healy. Straight into the action in the front row, replacing Jack McGrath. Nine, seven. This Irish pack that has performed magnificently this afternoon, and again they've secured the ball. He slipped, shielding it away through Carberry. Henshaw pirouetting. Carberry again, looking to find the inside runner. He's found Stander. And the ball turned oh, over, and again, Ardi Savea doing the dirty work, and here come New Zealand. Trouble for the Irish, ripping down this near side touchline is Cruden, that's not forwards. And back they will come. Everything happening at breakneck speed now. The All Blacks from turnover ball, absolutely written down somewhere or hammered in stone into a tablet when you turn the ball over move it away from the point of the turnover one two three quick passes into the wide open spaces and they're away Cruden on the wide outside Carney just knocked it on then kicked ahead and got wiped out by an all black coming across to try and cut him off but, but they are breathtaking when they get the ball in those situations the all blacks so uh, some comms trouble for the referee don't forget you can see new zealand again live on bt sport next yeah. saturday lunchtime yeah, 145 as they take on italy under the care of uh, connor yeah, o'shea of course now and rugby tonight wednesday at eight o'clock bt sport 1 hd and 4k uhd david campesi our special guest the anglo welsh cup taking center stage across the course of the weekend as well friday 7:30 between Bristol and Sale, and Exeter taking on the Cardiff Blues. Sunday lunchtime, 2.45, 1 HD and 4K UHD. Communications restored. All Blacks in possession. 
thanks to the knock-on from Rob Carney. 18 minutes still to play. Talked about, point ball game. talked about the crowd finding their way into the game at the beginning when it was just slightly unsure of how it was going to go. It's absolutely rocking in the stadium right now. Stay in. Perinara for Cruden. Impish runner trying to seek out those spaces. Liam Squire. Inside the 22, driven on by his skipper, Kieran Reid. Looking to turn the screw somehow or other. Dane Coles, forward in possession. Real explosion at the breakdown. A little tip on, oh, that's magnificent. And striding through goes Scott Barrett, reaching out with a telescopic arm. And on his debut, Barrett Jr. drags New Zealand ever closer. It's the extra pass, it's the facility to be able to get and give the ball. Devon Toner can't close the gap, he's got to see that coming. He has to see Scott Barrett running the line and expecting to get it. You've got to go in and hit. Kean he 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 yeah, Healy gets stopped looking in. Barrett is the perfect Can line. Toner can't come here. quite far enough. It's exactly what they're looking for. Yeah, Just that little shoulder ball, straight running, nothing complex. But it's the numbers on the backs of the shirts when they do it. So the Barrett brothers looking to combine. Late decision from their mother to fly out from Taranaki. I think a good decision, all things considered, regardless of the scoreline, regardless of the drama. That presumably just a happy bonus. And brother converts brother's try. The Barretts in unison, and now the scoreline looking altogether different. Ireland, remember, led by 30 points to eight. Now just four points separating them. And still so much time on the clock. Just spoken about the All Blacks' ability to hit the accelerator button, Paul. It is staggering, staggering to watch them do it. It's like watching the best batsman in the world rack up an innings where suddenly he scored 70. Sachin Tendulkar, he's not done anything flash, but the scoreboard, the scoreboard just ticks and ticks and ticks. The All Blacks accumulate points at a tremendous rate. Joey Carberry. Looking to find touch. My goodness, that is a magnificent touch from a young man on his debut in the most incredible of arenas. He's only made 10 appearances for Leinster. And here he is, bossing his big pack of forwards around and orchestrating field position like this. The Blacks again, inside their 22, and this is Ardi Savea, who has brought a real edge and an impact since arriving from the bench. Perinara, finding only Murray. Smith makes the tackle. Right. Cole's looking to play it quickly, he's managed it nicely, and away goes Barrett. And this is where New Zealand will turn up the heat at every available turn, and Savea can't cling on to it. Can't turn you back for a second. Brilliant kick from Carberry. Look more at home at Munster that one, it was one of Ronan O'Gara's fire it into the corner, keep the squeeze on. Just for a split second, they turn their back and the All Blacks are away. Yeah, but say, say, say me good or not. And it would have been exceptionally dangerous to see Julian Savea gathering there with green, green grass in front of him. 33-29. And 13 minutes left to play. Just an incredible atmosphere. Don't relieve the pressure. 
Yeah, and don't free engage, okay? okay? I ask them to don't relieve the pressure, but not free engage. So keep the gate, please. And if Ireland can hold out here, you feel that the entirety of this squad, and Joe Schmidt in particular, will be given the, the freedom of not only Dublin, every city in Ireland. Crouch! Of course, a, a Kiwi himself. Fine! Coach New Zealand Six. schools, Bay of Plenty, the Auckland Blues. And was in charge on that agonising day in Dublin three years ago when they just missed out. Still they lead, but the momentum is with New Zealand. Really good blast from Ultam Dilan, who's onto the field now, the comic man. Hands off, Black! Healy sets it up. He slipped. And the defensive intensity has been ratcheted up now. Good tackle from Charlie Famoyina. And there's another one from Aaron Cruden. Stay back! Great pressure from Carney on Barrett. Picked up though by Smith. Shaking off the attentions of Stander. And Kieran Reid carries it onwards. And they win the penalty. Taking the man without the ball. And Smith Tucking immediately looks to go. Always looking for those little opportunities. Perfect position in which they like to get the ball. Unstructured defence. Good hit there from CJ Stander. But the offence had already taken place. The initial drop ball from Barrett just hung on to too long. Uh, Soldier just Field has come alive. Resist, okay, because a little that's quiet fine. at the opening. Uh, that's, that's fine, Matt. They're okay. more than awake now. They have a thriller on their hands. Match that has seesawed in momentum throughout. Ireland bossing it for 50 minutes, 30 points to eight. What a comeback it's been. It may not be over just yet either. Kieran Reid secures the line-out ball. Sam Kane breaks away. Feed Smith, tackle from Heaslip. Whipped away by Tuunga Fasi. And again, the green defensive pressure is immense and it's been knocked forwards by New Zealand. Yet again, that defensive line so quick Over for, for New Zealand as Ireland launch it long. Savea and Carberry calls for the mark. I look down the list of Irish substitutes who've come on Healy and Beal and Delan, Van der Fleer, Carberry. They've got to make the same impacts as Ardi Savea. And of Tuunga Faia, it's, it's incredibly difficult to get yourself up to test match intensity Come off. off the bench if you've not been Come totally off. invested in the game. They'll have been on the edge of their seats, these boys, all the way through, desperate to get on and do their bit. Once you're on the field, you've got to get in there quick, you've got to get up to speed straight away and see if you yeah, can make a difference off. for your side. Time is off. They're all holding their yeah. hands up at the moment. Tremendous commitment. We had a replay of Robbie Henshaw diving on the ball, securing possession, just doing Many whatever it takes. George Moala, by the way, was um, the man down for New Zealand, requiring some treatment. Ah, OK. But they have been spurred into action by a, a breathtaking display from Ireland. A year and five days since they... Won the World Cup final by beating Australia. New Zealand have had to produce the goods. And they are still having to produce the goods. Rory Best is off the field, which means that Sean Cronin is on. And there is an all-new front row in Irish colours. Ultan Dulan is on as well. So the bench not quite empty. Marmion and Ringrose still lying in reserve. Middle is the line. 
What a sad end oh, for George Moala, okay. who scored his try after five minutes, and he's been a bright presence, but he's off the field. And that will prompt um, something of a, a reshuffle. Looks like Surveyor's lining up at inside centre. That's a nice prospect. Ouch. So the ball being marshalled here by Dane Coles. And they are driving very nicely. This is the kind of drive that the Irish were working in the early part of this match. In goes Surveyor to help out. Still they march forwards. And Ireland having a really difficult time stemming the flow here. What to do? They've done just enough. Perinara, little sniping break, working the feet. Murray wraps him up. Is that a little knock on? It was. It was. Good from Ireland. They know they've got the more stop once. They've only got to stop that momentum again. And then the All Blacks have to do something with the ball. They didn't give a penalty away. They can, yes, they conceded territory. Once Surveyor comes in on the on the side of the mall, they've lost that potential threat around the base from TJ Perinara breaking. So they held their nerve, they conceded ground, but the key thing is they didn't give a penalty away. The All Blacks handed them back possession. Brave to do it take some clear thinking but once the All Blacks had stopped that ball they'd stopped the ball twice Ireland were comfortable in defence stay here stay here back foot he slipped for Murray got a little nudge through pressure on and Barrett did well Savea away from Perinara. Back on their own 10 metre line. New Zealand. Away, push back, Green. Cruden, Kakatoa, Barrett. Cruden again, snared low by Sean Cronin this time. It's slow progress, but it is progress for New Zealand, and they will be as patient as is necessary until the opening arrives, until the moment arrives. That's forwards. Well, you have to credit the Irish defence so much this afternoon, Paul. They have just been mammoth every time. The All Blacks try to spring loose. There is somebody there. The latest hit from Andrew Trimble, a huge one. Andrew Trimble with Conor Murray closing the door on the outside, even if the pass had gone to hand. They'd managed to get an extra Irishman in attendance. And they're doing it clean. They're not over chasing at the breakdown. They're not looking for a miracle steal. They've got their patience back in defence. They're testing the All Black skills. Somebody with a three on the run in every Holding that four point lead. And as the clock ticks, yeah, every, time, uh, every single time that Ireland can snuff out okay, a New Zealand attack. Okay. That absolute glory, and what you see is a potential miracle almost in sporting terms. Gets a second or two closer. Well, the latest conversation between Mathieu Reynal, the referee, and Jamie Heaslip regarding the number of, uh, of Irishmen down on one knee at every stoppage. And you can understand why the referee wants them all moving along a little swifter. The game has taken quite a time to complete. There have been a number of injuries, but the ferocity of the impact, the intensity of the match as a whole, you can understand every single one of them needing the extra few seconds of breath. And another pressure in that scrummage, Carberry whipping it wide via Payne and Zebo sets off after his own kick. Good chase on here. Well worked by Fekitoa. Savea playing with fire behind his try line. 
and driven out. They're everywhere. Ireland are everywhere. Do the right thing at the right time. Brilliant from Ireland. Get the ball out. The scrum wasn't going anywhere. Bieland popped up on the right hand side, but then it's the ball into the midfield and the one over or the one over the top puts Zebo into space. He doesn't overplay, pushes the ball down the field, and then suddenly all those Irishmen who might have been kneeling down a minute ago have found thrown an extra leg. And they were all there. Brilliant stuff. Surveyor thought about the kick, but it's just not in his mindset to do it. It's not in his mindset, and it's not in the New Zealand mindset right now. They are chasing the game with less than five minutes to go. They are looking for those opportunities from everywhere, even if they might present themselves from behind their own try line. But it is a troubling prospect when Ireland are in this sort of mood. And now they have a fabulous attacking platform. Heaslip sets off with the try line in sight. Driving through the middle. Oh, it's Henshaw. Robbie Henshaw with the all-important score. Ireland in dreamland in Chicago. Could it really be the day? Talked about scoreboard pressure at the beginning and what effect it has on your skills. Aaron, Crew, Aaron Smith got subbed off after two or three error passes and knocked the ball on and dropped the ball in the face of Irish pressure. Conversely, Ireland have taken just about every opportunity. Perfect play there with a tight head under pressure. He's let breaks from the back of the scrum. The temptation with that good a ball is for him to charge into the opposition. He resisted it and ran the switch with Henshaw. Brilliant rugby, textbook, classic, absolutely perfect. With the kick to come. Joey Carver, just 21, on debut. Two more, two more points, and that really should do it for the Irish. Surely no way back from here. He slipped with the break, and a lovely line cut by Henshaw. All power, raw strength, and over the line. And just look what it means to him and to all of his teammates. A sensational moment, and now an 11-point buffer with only three minutes remaining. Even the All Blacks surely can't come back from here. Just the fifth time in history that the All Blacks have conceded 40 points. An extraordinary statistic. They keep on coming this afternoon in Chicago. And Barrett's now throwing passes like that. They've been hounded all afternoon. Everywhere they go, there has been a green man standing in front of them. And now they're in all kinds of bother inside their 22. Carberry making the tackle. Perinara. Ardi Savea, the All Blacks having to force everything at the moment. And it's all going wrong. Another knock-on from New Zealand, who've been butterfingered by their high standards this afternoon, not to mention ill-disciplined, and now the party is almost starting. Yet another one in Chicago. The place has been in meltdown since the Cubs win in the World Series. Goodness knows what will happen this evening. I just hope they restock the bars because they're going to take another hammer in tonight. Every Irish bar around the world will be jumping. What a performance this has been from an inspired Irish team. Playing for their mate, playing for history, playing for the whole of Irish rugby. They've never taken their foot off the gas midway through the second half as the All Blacks started to work their way through the gears. They started to get nervous when you see what they're capable of but they've refused to lie down, they've done it with skill, they've done it with bravery, they've done it with a fantastic game plan, 1-23, to they've delivered. This then, to add the gloss. Not this time, not this time for Joey Carberry, but less than a minute to play. Sensible from the young man, keep him in their own 22. Hold on, kid. Well, the countdown is now on to a famous moment, and it's so nearly fell. It's so nearly First fell. Green, second block, black scrum. Henshaw thought he was through for yet another one. 
Five tries today for the Irish. They have been absolutely staggering. Inspired at every turn. And as Dane Coles runs with the ball back to set the scrum up, you can say with absolute certainty, not this time, lads. Not even the All Blacks can get themselves out of this hole. Extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. It's really happening. The Irish will have their moment. Maybe not without one last blast from New Zealand through Barrett, who approaches halfway. Just a handful more tackles will do it. The blast on the whistle. Mathieu Reynal refusing to blow the final whistle, but it will not be far away. It will be one kick away. One kick for history. The mighty All Blacks felled by Ireland for the first time in history. Their American dream has come true. It's taken 111 years, 29 meetings, and so much heartache. Surely today, Anthony Foley, their guiding light. 40 points to 29, and in Chicago, where long-standing records are laid to rest. A simply incredible match, won by an incredible team. And that unbeaten record of 18 wins on the spin for New Zealand comes to a grinding halt in front of a machine dressed entirely in green. We have to give the All Blacks the credit for that record. Extraordinary levels they've achieved to get there. But Ireland were truly inspired today. Briefly, we saw them standing as an eight in the shape of a number eight in tribute to Anthony Foley as they face the hacker. Together as one. Absolutely together as one. We talk about Anthony Foley and his ability to guide his team and do the right thing and make the big decisions. They made them all right today. They took some that we didn't think were the right ones and yielded points. They were brave to the end. They ran the ball from scrum, which led to that last period of pressure, the last score for Henshaw. They've done so many things right. They thoroughly deserve to win today. They've knocked the All Blacks off their perch. It's been a magnificent display. And if you didn't know about rugby in America now and you were there or saw this, how could you not fall in love with the game? And I was there moment for sure. And the All Blacks, well, they gave everything they had. But in the end, it wasn't enough to defy the Irish. A stunning, stunning win. It will live long in the memory. So don't forget, lots more rugby as well as cricket, of course, coming your way on BT Sport. The first test day four tonight from two o'clock in the morning. BT Sport 3 HD, Australia against South Africa. Rugby tonight, Wednesday at eight on uh, BT Sport 1 and 4K UHD. The Anglo-Welsh Cup next weekend with Bristol Sale and Exeter against the Cardiff Blues on the Sunday. And sandwiched between that in the middle, Italy against New Zealand. And next Saturday from 1.45, the All Blacks looking to bounce back BT Sport 1 HD for that one as well. So to the way it unfolded, and perhaps not the most auspicious of starts for the Irish, in fact, because Naholo breaking clear here in just the fifth minute of the match. A little bit of fortune from New Zealand off the head of their skipper, Kieran Reid. And George Moala went in. Uh, followed then... A yellow card for Joe Moody for uh, upending Robbie Henshaw and the Irish struck twice. Geordie Murphy with the first and then this one from CJ Stander. But it was the break from Rob Carney that set it up. All important yards up to within a metre. And Stander's job, well, it's never straightforward against this kind of opposition, but he carried it out to excellent effect. That was their second try. And then this beautiful moment from Conor Murray. Saw the hole. Aaron Smith was led and footed for once. And the All Blacks left clutching at thin air as Murray raced through for try number three. They led by 25 points to eight at the break. Then there was this from Zebo. In the end, a straightforward finish for the winger, but they set it up quite magnificently and they deserved it. Every last point they deserved today. Then came the fight back. The offload from Coles, brilliantly taken in by Perinara. And suddenly... 
New Zealand tails were up. The handling skills exceptional as ever. And they really began to believe at this point, just a 15-point deficit followed up by a quite brilliant finish from Ben Smith. How he got this down, we will never know. Barrett did well holding off three defenders and Smith poaching in the corner. That was some finish, Paul. Magnificent bit of skill out the back of the hand from Barrett and the dexterity to get the ball down when getting battered into touch by two men. It was a nervous time for the Irish who managed to claw back three points through Connor Murray and then another score from the All Blacks there fourth of the day and it came from the debutant Scott Barrett playing alongside his brother Bowden for the first time in uh, a professional match and Scott Barrett reaching out his long arms to finish the score and after the conversion it was 33-29 and there were some very nervous Irishmen both on and off the field, but Zebo conjured this. Panic in the all-black ranks. And Savea caught in possession, and from the resultant scrum, he slipped with the charge. And a lovely line from Robbie Henshaw. It was the vital score. Absolutely critical, and Ireland had done their job. What a job it was. The history men, and we can hear from one of them, the Irish skipper Rory Best, is talking to Dan Light. I'm here with Rory Best, captain of Ireland. Rory, congratulations. We had Brian O'Driscoll on right before, right after the halftime, and we said to him, "What was he talking about in the, in the in the locker room? What were you talking about in the locker room that inspired these guys?" Uh, look, we just talked about attacking New Zealand. You know, we know they're a great side, and you can see how good a side they are how much it means to our boys to have won that but we just knew we had to go out and attack them if you give them ball and stand off them they are an unbelievably dangerous outfit but look I couldn't be prouder of the work we put in over the last look it hasn't just been the last week a couple of weeks it has been a long time in coming it's been a long time and it's history made and uh, look we're absolutely ecstatic with a, a marvellous performance for us and of course uh, Chicago being the second home now for the Irish Rugby Football Union a fantastic and utterly skillful display as you said how in the world will you top this <laughs> going forward uh, look i think first of all i have to say a massive thank you to the support it's been unbelievable um the atmosphere here it felt like a home game to us and you know i suppose now we're gonna have to die the river green for this one rory congratulations thanks very much cheers thank you rory best celebrating a famous moment the river of course died blue in the week for the cubs victory their first in 108 years in the world series ireland today victorious over the all blacks for the first time in 111 years quite astonishing history made in chicago a reminder that we will have cricket for you tonight from two o'clock the first test match between australia and south africa you don't want to miss that live on bt sport 3 hd and what a day we have had what a match we have had absolutely stellar five tries for the irish 40 points to 29 the score line our thanks to paul grayson thank you all very much for being with us if every rugby match is like that oh my goodness we've got some rugby coming for you across bt sport in the next few days i doubt it will match anything like that sort of quality glorious stuff it's all ireland thank you